Peace, people. I, I, I just got home. I was trying to chill out and relax, and I, I don't know. Uh, I was watching something on YouTube, uh, Michael Francisi. Uh, he has a really cool uh, YouTube channel. He was a guy that was in the mob, the mafia. Uh, he was he was uh, very influential, but he does a very, very good YouTube channel right now. Um, say what you want. If, if you really don't know all about his background and how he has converted to, you know, Christianity, you know, some people like going down that road, whatever. But Michael Francisi does a really good job on his YouTube channel. He's out free, doing good things in life. Uh, but he recently did a, uh, a uh, tour in Italy. And <clears throat> so some of the things he talked about reminded me of an incident. So this is going to be another uh, story time that to me is just crazy. This is like, and in, in doing my research, I found out like this, this person I'm going to tell you about here in a second. He, this dude was like a major player. He was like, I remember when, when this arrest went down, picture like uh, showing a pinpoint of like Claymont, Delaware. They showed like arrows going all over the, I remember there was arrows going to Turk, like it, it's crazy. So let me, I'm not trying to divulge too much, but let's go get on to this next episode of story time. So this is crazy. This is just crazy. And then it reminded me of another one that almost took place in the exact same shopping center. That was just like crazy. So, but that's going to be coming up. I'm going to, I'm going to write, I wrote this note down. I got to write the other note down, but uh, let's get on with story time because uh, the, these are good memories for me. It's just crazy. Like people, like I couldn't write, you know, someone told me to write a book on story time, but I honestly don't believe anybody would believe my stories, but this is a true story. So I was hired in 1983. Uh, as I, many of you know, you're probably bored of hearing this, but I'm trying to give you a, a timeline um, with Delaware State Police, civilian dispatcher, right? Loved it. Great job. And you've heard all the other stories, and I just loved it. <clears throat> well, I lived in, in the, the region was uh, covered by like Troop One. That was as further north in Newcastle County, Delaware, that you could go. There was three county, only three counties in Delaware: it was Newcastle County, like uh, Kent County, and then their real big county at the bottom of the state, Sussex County. So we're we're in, we're in Newcastle County, and Claymont, Delaware, is right by the uh, the Pennsylvania state line. So we we you know we're where I lived was, I don't know, a handful of miles uh, down the road in a place called uh, Belfont. But it, the state police barracks, Troop 1, has always been called Penny Hill. That was the original state police barracks for the entire state of Delaware. Delaware State Police Troop 1. Really cool. A lot of really cool history. They do an outstanding job of memorializing the history of the Delaware State Police. So, uh you know, I like I told you guys, I was really close because I lived like a mile from Troop One at most, and I, I used to hang out ever since I was a kid. I used to basically just loiter at at the state police barracks because uh, I knew a, uh, a gentleman named Julio who was kind of like my uh, big brother, role model, father, whatever you want to call him. Really cool. Julio was really good. He he really pretty much saved my life and uh he he knew what he was doing i i didn't know what he was doing back then but he he was a really good role model so i got to know all the troopers and then i ended up working there part-time just doing like like i when i say working i was they would just let me file like it was like great you could never do this nowadays but like in the old days they would do like uh the little arrest warrant cards just literally like on an index card it'd be like john e smith you know, 123 Maple Lane, whatever it was, and do all that. And then, you know, I get, I don't know how, you know, I can't remember the system, but I remember I, I, when I say I worked there, I was just pretty much like volunteer and they, they trusted me. And I just filed all these like little arrest warrants. I just, I knew all the troopers, really, really cool upbringing. You could never do that today in time. But uh, 
So once again, I'm, I knew, when I say I knew all the troopers, I don't know any of them now, but <clears throat> so <laughs> there was a place in uh, Claymont, there was a place in Claymont, Delaware. It's, 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 you don't understand why it's no longer there, but uh, there was a guy named uh, Vinny. He, uh, he had uh, Vinny's Pizza, 99% sure it was Northtown Plaza. There was, there was a Triangle Mall, or tri I always get this mixed up. I think it was called the Tri-State Mall and the Northtown Plaza, almost like abutted each other. I'm 99% sure he was in the Northtown Plaza. So <laughs> he knew, like, troopers, all kinds of county cop. He was friend really funny, real heavy Sicilian accent. He was like, when you would call his place, he'd go, Minnie's Pizza. He would. He always had this one uh, cliche. I'm trying to remember what, uh, his one. Uh, Vinny's Pizza. What, what? What do you need? Or no, he. He always says Vinny Pizza with a real heavy Sicilian act. And he goes. He would. He had one little after statement. I forget what it was, but he was really like really funny. But um. So a lot of times, like, because he was so generous with law enforcement which you're going to learn why later in the story. But he was really, he was really nice guy. I, despite what happened to him later, you know, it could have just, you know, I know everybody's going to say it was just a big, you know, ploy, big cover up, but I, I, I truly believe the guy had a good heart. He just got caught up in some stuff, but the, uh, so we, I mind you, I've worked probably 15, 20 miles away. If you went down the interstate and, uh, Every, you know, I I would mess some, with some different troopers from time. I'm like, hey, you know, hey, it's about time for some Vinny's Pizza or something like that, you know. And they're like, hold on, let me make a call. You know, and it, like, it was just so funny. Like, literally, like, less than an hour, we'd have like two or three pizzas from Vinny's Pizza. It, you know, whatever you wanted. And, and it was really good pizza, too. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Really good pizza. So, <laughs> Vinny was before he became like real famous in the pizza business and before some some other troopers became like high ranking in the uh, state police world they there was Benny and another person who became very tight who was never implicated in this whatsoever but um, it was weird because like this person I like it was like another one of my mentors who like always uh, fought for me to uh, do different things in, in, in the state police world and stuff like that. It was like, it was weird. I, I, I really did have a lot of systems other than, you know, like a eye doctor, but uh, <clears throat> so Vincent Scotto is the guy's name. I think it was so weird. I just tried to do some research to give you guys some dates and uh, I could only find one bit of information. I know sometimes in the older days it's hard to get like archives and stuff like that. And I was trying to, and I just read briefly, and I think it was around 1990, but I think I left around end of 89 or 90. So I already knew about this, but uh, it, I didn't realize this part. And it, wait, you know, it makes perfect sense, but. I thought he was the top dog. I guess he was not the top dog. He was like maybe the second or third in command. The way it was very vague in what I just read, but um, they said he turned government witness, which is normal. But it was so funny, like oh my god! I remember like researching this like like way back when, and then all of a sudden there's like can't find anything on it. Like you know some of these crime detectives are going to get out there and you know probably discover different avenues to find it. But Vincent Scotto was, uh, he was really good. I'm not going to lie to you. He was really, when I say he was good, really nice to the police department. Say what you want. Uh, he had great pizza, but uh, he ended up, man, he was, he was looking at like pretty much like the rest of his life in prison. I don't think he, I, you know, I, I don't think he did anything that was, you know, death, death sentence or anything like that. But it was a crazy. They showed picture the, the this being the pink point, and then like this, and then this was like all of these all these finger links 
were all going all these uh it was like heroin and st it was stuff was going to turkey like all over internet internationally but i guess it was coming in from new york coming down to uh claymont delaware which is just like just like spitting distance from philadelphia so it made total sense but uh vincent scotto was running like literally an international drug ring like out of his back room and like on a daily basis, police officers would be in the front room sitting in the booth at lunchtime, just eating pizza and chit chatting with them. It was just crazy. But uh, yeah, that's another story time, real true story time. I, uh, you know, I may spend some more time trying to dig up some more information, but it's, it was kind of really interesting that they said he turned government information, turned a uh, government witness. And now I'm having a hard time finding stuff. So he may have gone into a witness protection program with all the uh, law enforcement officers he knew i'm not saying that occurred but uh it, it it's just crazy just like and then there was another really really um uh serial person not related to this story but that did a lot of bad things that i'm going to tell you about later and that that unfortunately was in law enforcement that i knew real well but that's this story time y'all just you know, keep trying to do what you do. And if you got to struggle, stay alive. Just do what you got to do to stay alive. Just, just keep fighting. Thank you. Peace out.